And over the years, has the information you have around Warfin changed? Uh, I think the understanding has in, enormously. I mean, mm -hmm. from the, the days when I was first practicing, where we had great big books like Martindale's Pharmacopoeia and things like that, the focus was very much on on having a good quality product mm -hmm. and. Uh, the information you got was the sort of the scientific literature which had been processed and produced in a book which was produced every few, few years. Mm -hmm. um, nowadays the, uh, the access to information uh, is so much greater. It's processed into expert views more. Um, there are obviously a range of sites on the internet uh, of varying validity and status, but it's the sort of thing where we'd be able to get information quite quickly. Having said that, the core information about warfarin and its, um, its effects mm -hmm. hasn't really changed that much. I think we've got a better idea of how the patient's diet or behaviours may change that. In mm -hmm. fact, the patient's genetics is one of the factors which may change it as well. Mm -hmm. So some of that tweaking of the getting it right for that patient and what they do, I think there's more information around on the internet. Uh, the core material for something which is a, a drug which is well over half a century old mm -hmm. hasn't changed all that much. Okay, that's interesting. So it's interesting how you say that it's, it is something that fundamentally is the same, but the understanding around it, um, both uh, from uh, a sort of a scientific point of view as a general community and from a specific individual, is definitely changing there. Yes. So. Uh, I think as well the, uh, the understanding of how to get the dose just right and the technology has improved there as well to make that prediction more accurate as well, I think. Okay. Um, we talk a little bit about the technology as well because yeah. we have all these digital resources as you've already mentioned about the internet. Um, do you, how do you see digital changing the use of warfarin? Are there specific technologies you can pinpoint now and saying that is actually having, a, having an influence? So the, the dosing used to be um, a doctor or, or someone would look at the, the blood, how thin the blood was, how, how anticoagulated the patient was and the dose that the patient was taking and make a, a judgment. And over time I think that relationship has been understood better and now we have uh, algorithms and Bayesian algorithms which predict from what's happening in the, the past and the individual's results and what happens in the population to try and give you a much better estimate to get the dosing right. And I think we've, those have been shown to be as good as an expert doctor and better than a, a junior doctor. And the other element of technology which is changing there and the, uh, the digital world is the, uh, is the measurement of the, uh, of the bleeding uh, and how anticoagulated the patient is and that that's now aid, able to be done without a major laboratory involvement and without the patient having to go to hospital. It can be done in community pharmacies, some patients even do it um, at home. So we've got technology simplifying capturing the data and also uh, advising what to do with the, with the data and converting that into recommended behaviours and doses for the patient. Right. And I think the final question, um, do you still think we'll be using warfarin in half a century's time? <laughs> I think it will be used in the world in half a century's time. It's, um, it's a very cheap drug out of patent. Uh, I think the challenges are its, it's feedback, um, the feedback loop that's required to get it used appropriately, but I, I think uh, newer drugs which don't require such a high level of monitoring are now coming into the, into the West. They're still quite expensive. Mm -hmm. There's an argument about whether they're cost effective when you take into account the uh, the additional uh, monitoring and so on. But I think warfarin, you know, like aspirin, I think, is, which has been around for well over a century and a half, these things, are, it's likely to stay because for poor countries, it's a very cost-effective drug. Well, thanks very much, Nick. Thank you. It's been a pleasure.